Welcome to Quantum Mechanics, a powerful framework for understanding the universe. Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to begin our study of the harmonic oscillator. We're going to start off by looking at the classical harmonic oscillator, which hopefully you all have some familiarity with, and then uh, talk about the, harmonic, the quantum harmonic oscillator and in particular the nature of the method we're going to use to solve it and what solving it actually means. So the classical harmonic oscillator, if we, if we write down the Hamiltonian, kinetic plus potential, potential energy is time independent in this case. Classically we have Hamilton's differential equations. So, what does it mean to solve the classical harmonic oscillator? Well, maybe solving Hamilton's equations, so long as we can understand the nature of the solution, but we can in this case. They're sines and cosines. Omega is the frequency. M is the mass. So, linear combinations of sine omega t, cosine omega t. The trajectories trace out ellipses in the xp phase plane. So how do we pass to the quantum harmonic oscillator and um, what would it mean to solve the quantum harmonic oscillator? Well, we could just take this classical Hamiltonian and replace the position with the position operator and the momentum with the momentum operator. And that's what we're going to do. And that's what we have down here. Remember, uppercase P is one-dimensional uh, momentum operator, uppercase X, one-dimensional position operator, and we know exactly what those operators are, and we've worked out a number of their consequences. So, the time-independent Schrodinger equation for the this system, well, that's a general form for a given Hamiltonian, but for the harmonic oscillator is given by this expression here. Okay, Remember, when the potential energy is independent of time, we solve for the eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenfunctions, and we can build the general solution from linear combinations of the eigenstates, and each one is multiplied by a coefficient, and the time-dependent term, e to the minus i et over h bar. Okay, so that's what it means to solve the quantum mechanical harmonic oscillator. So we need to write down the uh, linear ordinary differential equation for the corresponding to the time independent problem. We could do that, that's a traditional way of doing it, but I'm going to introduce another way which will set us up ideally for our studies of angular momentum. This is called the um, raising and lowering operator approach, the creation and annihilation operator approach, or the ladder operator approach. Those are three names for the same thing. Originally, I believe this was due to Dirac for the harmonic oscillator. And interestingly enough, the thing to keep in mind is that this entire method essentially uses nothing more than this commutation relation in very different ways over and over and over again. Once we get through it, you should come back and think about that. Okay, I like this method a lot. When I was learning uh, um, ordinary differential equation theory, I was never taught this. I was only taught this in phys physics courses for the harmonic oscillator and for angular momentum in more advanced situations. So I wondered why. Mathematical physicists have developed this method further, and I'll give you one reference, and you can you can. Uh, you know, use Google Scholar to search on this reference and get many others. 
it's ca called the factorization method and this is a nice paper that talks about a little bit how how general it can be I just mentioned that uh, I'll come back to that later on why factorization that sounds a little bit different than ladders and raising and lowering and creation and annihilation you'll see shortly okay so we begin by introducing two operators which are the key for everything we do a which is p minus i m omega x and called the a and a dagger which is p plus i m omega x that i is important and uppercase p uppercase x are the momentum operator and position operator okay you're going to want to refer back to these definitions over and over. Note that A is not self-adjoint, and A dagger is not self-adjoint. But if you take the adjoint of A, you get A dagger. You take the adjoint of A dagger, you get the other one, because P and X are self-adjoint. Okay. Now we're going to need to work out some commutation relations regarding A and A dagger. Why? Mm, trust me on this. We'll come back. Whenever I was learning this, it was really slick and cool, and I liked it, but always nagging at the back of my mind was, why does it work? Okay, keep that in mind. Keep those commutation relations, X and P, in mind. So the commutator of A with A dagger, remember I told you when we uh, did commutators, you're going to use these over and over. Okay, you just work it out and I'll let you go through the details and think through them, but you just, they don't commute, and you get 2m omega h bar. Now, we can work out that, so that's the commutator of a with a dagger. What about the product of a dagger a? That's going to be useful. Okay, you just work out the product. Okay. And you, you get 2m times the quantity of h, the harmonic oscillator Hamiltonian minus omega h bar over 2. Okay, you can also work out a a dagger. That's nothing more than the commutator of a with a dagger. This is a slick little use of our commutator because remember that's a a dagger minus a dagger a plus a dagger a. Okay, and using what we already have, it's this term. Okay, so these two commutators, products, sorry, we've worked out the commutator above, and we worked out the products of A dagger A and A A dagger below. Now, something that's, that uh, is going to be the key quantity in which we work is called the number operator. It's got a constant out front, a real constant, 1 over 2m h bar omega, and multiplying A dagger A. Okay, the number operator, uppercase N. Now, if you work back on these relations we derived, okay, use substituting A dagger A, well, using wherever you have an a dagger a, the number operator times its constant, you can go back to either this expression, well a dagger a, that's 369, and with a little bit of algebra, you can obtain that the Hamiltonian operator is h bar omega times the quantity number operator plus a half. Okay, important expression. Now we have several properties of the number operator that are going to be crucial that I've bullet pointed here. The number operator is self-adjoint. That's important because it means it has real eigenvalues and a complete set of eigenvectors. That's all you can almost all, all you can do this in your head. 
using the definition of A and A dagger. So go back and think about that. Now, the number operator is positive. What could I possibly mean by that? Well, here's what I mean by positive. If we look at the expectation value of n, or what is, what is that? Forget the or for the moment. That's um, writing down the definition of n. We can pull out the 1 over 2m h bar omega. And writing this in the old notation for inner product, you see that's the inner product of a acting on ket psi with a acting on ket psi. Okay, inner product of a vector with itself. That's greater than or equal to zero, and that's what I mean by positive. Commutators. Crucial, crucial, crucial. Commutator of n with, with a and commutator of n with a bar. Okay, so you have this constant out front, but look at what you have. A dagger A commutator with A, A dagger A commutator with A dagger. Remember when I did commutators, we had these four properties, and I said you're going to use them all. This is the third property in that list. So if you work it out, you get the commutator of N with A is minus A, and the commutator of N with A dagger is just A dagger. This is a good exercise for you. Okay, now this is a little bit of a slick notation here. We want to consider the general equation for the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the number operator in. But you say, wait, I thought you wanted to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the Hamiltonian. Yes, but uh, remember, going back to the top, the number operator was very closely related to the Hamiltonian. We'll come back to that in a second. So now, we derive these properties of the number operator. Here's the notation we're, gonna, we're going to adopt, and it's, it's a pretty slick notation, and because this is what Dirac notation allows you to do. The eigenvalue we're going to denote by eta, ket eta, and the i sorry, the eigenvector by ket eta, the eigenvalue by eta. So with this nice direct notation, we can just take the vertical line and the 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 right angle bracket and plug in plug in the middle the value the the notation for eigenvalue and we know it's a vector corresponding to the eigenvalue eta. So the eigenvalue equation is number operator acting on ket eta equals eta times ket eta. Okay. Now, our, so our goal is to determine the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors, or eigenstates, eta. Eigenvalues, eta, and eigenstates, ket eta. Of the, and so, we're going to use this property. The positivity property, and if you go to this, use that in together with this, you easily get the fact that the eta, the eigenvalue, is greater than or equal to zero. Okay. Now, it's a simple, now we worked out all these properties, commutators, number operators, and so on. Go back and check them all, but what you can easily do now is verify that the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the number operator are also eigenvalues and eigenstates eigenvectors of the Hamiltonian of the harmonic oscillator. Check this. Okay, go back, plug in, go back to the top, let H act on ket eta, work it through, and you, you see you're going to get a constant times ket eta. Okay. 
That's a good place to stop right now because I'm leaving you with uh, going back and verifying a number of computations. We'll pick up next time with looking specifically at eigenvectors and eigenvalues to we, where we, we're going to discover the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian corresponding to the harmonic oscillator. Okay, that's all for today. See you next time. Bye.